So when have you fallen in love with the world? I love the world. Most days. Most days I wake up and, and I'm glad to be alive. You know, if I wake up at just the right time, the sun has found its way through the crack in the window curtain and, and it catches the crystals of the ceiling light and makes these, these uh, rainbow sparkles across the walls and ceiling. And if I'm paying attention, when my eyes open, I'll think about how wondrous that is. That from the seemingly random mix of sunlight, a crack in the window and some hanging crystals, there's a glittering light parade on display. The scientific explanation is enough for me. White light refracting through crystal amplifying its colors. The scientific explanation is enough for me to feel wonder and even awe. This is possible and it happens. What might be possible with intentionality? So that's a good day. A bad day may start with me reaching for the laptop, scrolling through news stories, looking for the bad news of the morning. And yes, there's always some to be found if you're looking for it. Doom scrolling, they call it. I can doom scroll for half an hour, even an hour without noticing it. And you can be sure I'm not noticing any light rainbows on my wall if I'm doing that. Those days, I don't feel like I'm in love with the world. It's mysteries and it's gifts, it's marvels and, and it's natural wonders. They are, they are far from my awareness. Instead, all I see on those days are mass shootings and, and poverty and injustice, things that are important not to ignore. But, well, when that's all I see, then all I can think is, how could anybody love a world where so many terrible things happen? And then when I feel that way, the question, the question then becomes how to fall in love with the world again. The word again is important here. I don't think any of us could have made it to where we are in life if we, if we hadn't fallen in love with the world a little bit somewhere along the way. Now, maybe it's hard to remember that feeling. Maybe it was a long time ago when we last felt the rapturous pull of this planet's call to life, when we noticed its beauty and majesty and we fell and we tumbled headlong into this love affair with all things which make up that thing called the world. When have you fallen in love with the world? When was the first time? Maybe for me, it was a sunny beach in Florida where we went every summer when I was very little. The big old hotel where my parents let me wander around when I was just a few years old. I don't think you could get away with that now. But I always found my way back to them on that blindingly white beach where I played in the sand, digging an endless hole with a blue plastic spade the sound of steel drums in the distance, the lizard sunbathing on the walkway. I fell in love with that place, with what the world had to offer in it with the ocean waves crashing near the shore, endless possibility out on the horizon. Maybe it's too easy to say you fell in love with the world in a seaside resort where everything is beautiful and where you have a moment to breathe, to play, to rest. Where have you fallen in love with the world? What moment of beauty and rest wooed you to this life, this earth? What place of natural beauty and wonder has filled your soul? What special memory do you hold in your imagination of somewhere restorative, somewhere where you glimpsed how lovely life could be, somewhere where you frolicked and played? Maybe my falling in love place was the neighborhood I grew up in. The neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Hunt, they worked out in their garden and always had time to talk to me. I come with my dog running on ahead. 
You'll know I'm coming when you see her first, I told Mrs. Hunt very importantly one day, pointing at the puppy who went with me everywhere. She was planting geraniums and they were salmon colored and bright pink. And she laughed and told me that was good to know. My dog ran on ahead and there was a whole day ahead full of adventures waiting with so many friends in their houses with their yards. What a beautiful world, I thought. When have you fallen in love with the world? When have you felt surrounded by community, neighborliness, part of a network of love and appreciation, humor and joy? When has life been fun and frivolous? When a four-legged friend has taken you for a walk rather than the other way around? Maybe I fell in love with the world when I met my friend Donald Harrison, we were in third grade. Donald was black, I was white. Donald wore jackets emblazoned with sports logos and I barely knew a football from a basketball, but we were fast friends. We'd run all over the playground at recess, making up games from our imaginations. Donald could go anywhere I could go in my imagination. Donald could build worlds, other countries, other planets, even right there amidst the grass and dandelions of that playground. We could spin, a, spin around in unison and be rocket ships to the moon, and we could wear our coats on our heads and be ghosts haunting the misty swamp. Donald was from the so-called wrong side of the tracks and I was from the right side. This was Indiana where we really did have train tracks separating our lives, not to mention the teacher who pulled me aside and thanked me for being friends with Donald, for playing with him as though I were doing him a favor. My first inkling that all was not fair or equal or just in this world. But on that playground, we were one even trading each other's coats and hats back and forth, running in the brisk winter cold, rolling the snow into a giant snowball one winter when it lay like a carpet on the ground, just waiting to be rolled up. What a wonderful world it was with Donald, I remember thinking. When have you fallen in love with the world? When have you had a friend who let you be your full self? When have you accepted someone for who they were fully and completely, and when have they accepted you? What did it feel like to dream together, to imagine together, to run together, and to know and be known? How sweet did the world feel in those moments? Maybe I fell in love with the world when I shared my first kiss. 16 years old with a girl named Lana Waldron. It was on her parents' sofa in the dim living room after talking for hours for so long about so much and so little at once, every word intriguing, every moment of a prayer of hope and, and promise. We talked until the clock had struck that magical midnight hour and everything seemed not quite real anymore. She sparkled and I felt like I sparkled when I was with her and the world sparkled. And so of course there was a kiss. Lana, who is still my friend and who married another high school friend and who teaches children in her home and who grew up to share so many of the values important to me. Lana, who kissed me and let me know that I was lovable and that falling in love was something available not just for people in movies, but for me too. When have you fallen in love with the world? Who in your life taught you that you were lovable? Was there someone who offered a hug or kiss or words that you waited for, that you needed just that moment? Whose touch do you long for now to return you to loving the world? Or maybe I fell in love with the world when I got to see some of it. When my high school art class took a bus to Chicago and dropped us off in the middle of the city. Be back at the bus station at three, the anti-MAME-esque art teacher told us again. 
this would never happen these days. And there we were, 20 high schoolers from Indiana with a whole day of freedom in the city of Chicago with its bustle and noise and activity and tall buildings and crowded streets. Or when my family moved to Colorado and we drove those mountain roads until we stood at the top looking out over the natural beauty below and then driving home, stopping for a herd of elk who passed slowly along the road as we admired their surprising grace and soulful eyes. Or when we moved to Sydney, Australia and lived right across from the legendary opera house and took water taxis there to see plays or walk the city streets alongside the sparkling harbor. Or when I moved to the smog of Los Angeles, the smog and the bustle and marveled at, palms, at palm trees decorated for Christmas and celebrities buying canned soup in the grocery store. And of course, my spouse who I met on New Year's Day in a coffee house. One word from him and I knew things would never be the same again. And always like those early memories at that Florida hotel, the ocean nearby, always. Waves crashing on that sea of endless possibility. When have you fallen in love with the world? What place or bustling city or some glorious piece of nature brought you into maturity? Gave you a glimpse of the wider world? Who did you find in this world to be your chosen family, to be a presence in your life, to remind you not to fall out of love with the world? So many times I have fallen in love with the world. And so many times that love has been shaken. So many times I've heard and seen and witnessed terrible things. So many times I've lost something or or someone I've loved. Sometimes I've wondered if humanity had any sense or moral compass. Sometimes I've worried that the world and this earth is too fragile and too precious and we aren't keeping up with all its needs. I've despaired. I felt useless. I felt hopeless. I felt alone, disconnected an alien in this world. At times this past year, I felt all those things. And now I ask myself, how to fall back in love with the world? There's no easy answer. Loving the world comes naturally most of the time. All those moments I talked about. I wasn't trying to love it. We don't work at it when we're young or joyous or open. It just is. It just happens in all those moments. You know, this week, Lawrence and I took a walk in the sweet spring air, and it really is sweet smelling. No virus has stopped the blossom and bloom of spring this year. As we walked down the neighborhood streets of the houses we have come to love to walk by, suddenly there was this, this energetic oversized puppy scampering up to us. She's going to be a big dog because she's a big puppy now. And without even touching her, you could see how soft her fur was and, and how jubilant, unabashedly joyful she was. She ran to us and jumped on us, so joyful, loving. That's a creature that nothing bad has ever happened to, I said as we laughed and walked away from the puppy's apologetic owners a creature that couldn't even imagine a world that wasn't wonderful, that wasn't worth falling in love with every second of the day. Perhaps we learn from this puppy. Perhaps that's our natural state to be so in love with the world. Perhaps that sense of wonder and excitement is where we come from and where we have to get back to. You know, the fall means to, to let go and to, to tumble to give up control for a moment. That's hard to do, especially when there's already so much uncertainty. But perhaps, just perhaps, if we were to let go for a moment and see the power of those ocean waves or mountain ranges, notice the colors and light, feel gratitude for the friends in our lives, 
acknowledge what unites us as human beings and distinguishes us as unique pe people. Appreciate the grit and bustle of the city and the majesty of the wilderness and see our capacity for joy and openness in the eyes of an animal. Perhaps if we could do all these things, or perhaps even if we could just do one of them, no, not just do them, fall into them, let go long enough to really feel it, take it in. Perhaps then we could fall in love with the world again. And maybe it would feel like the first time. After all, the world awaits your love. Don't be afraid to give it.